Well, very brave of you to invite me, Madam President, and very brave of me to come to follow Michael, who must have addressed this hallowed chamber more times than I've almost had hot dinners. And um, I'm going to break with another tradition. I'm not going to wish you happy Valentine's Day. I think probably in respect to Oscar Pistorius's late girlfriend, just to strike a doom-laden note early on in proceedings. As a, this is a debate about feminism, and it's not, can't play at all for laughs. Um, Madam President, thank you for our delicious dinner upstairs. We had, as I'm sure you're all wondering, um, <laughs> Brussels sprout and Stilton soup, followed by roast leg of, I presume, horse. Um, it was quite, deli <laughs> quite delicious nonetheless. I highly commend it. Um, Michael started off by talking about his starring role in the admission of women to this chamber. And he did, I think, slightly elide over some of the more egregious insults that women have suffered in this hall over the past 50 years. No, for longer. Women weren't considered eligible at all at the beginning. They wouldn't, not before the First World War. It wasn't even a twinkle in your eye, Michael. Um, <laughs> not in your eye, but in anyone's eye. I'd, I'm proud to say that a distant relative of mine called Millicent Fawcett, who you must have heard of, who was a suffragette, was the first woman guest of the union, and I named my daughter after her. She's called Charlotte Millicent. My mother, Charlotte, was the first married woman undergraduate at LMH, and she managed to have one child, a pre previous president, my brother Boris, and be pregnant with me when she sat finals. So. <laughs> Nonetheless, it wasn't until 1922, as Michael omitted to tell you in his superlatively funny speech, that the first motion was tabled to admit women. It failed by 34 votes. But the arguments were infinitely subtle. One speaker from Balliol said that women were only capable of voting for the speaker they found most handsome. Another speaker, also from Balliol, said that women couldn't debate just as they couldn't play rugby. I'm sorry, I've actually played rugby, so <laughs> women do and can play rugby. In 1926, a motion was actually passed that the women's colleges should be levelled to the ground. One woman spoke in opposition, and she said that we should keep the women's colleges because women were a harmless race and only really enjoyed brass rubbing and gathering wild flowers. <laughs> in 1934, the lefties who voted that they would not fight for king and country rejected the idea of women coming in here even at tea time, i.e. in the hours between four and six. As you said, sexual intercourse began in 1963 and so did full membership of the Union for Women. And I'm sure there's been many, I'm sure one of you can count, how many female librarians, treasurers, and presidents there have been since then. Women in public life have not made quite the same strides, I would argue. In 2013, we don't have a country that's run by women, by old Etonians who passed through this university reading greats, PPE or history on their way to the highest offices of state to be mayor, chief whip and prime minister. And I'm only talking about the old Etonians who are at Oxford. I did a book when I was at Oxford. I was the archetypal pushy undergraduate. 30 years later, one of my contributors who works in telly gave an interview to Charwell. And he said, all those pushy people who are so annoyingly keen to run what we essentially what are essentially pretend institutions at Oxford, the union, the newspaper clubs, are or not all going to get the comeuppance you might think they deserve later in life. They end up running things for real. He was right. The old Etonians did end up running everything. And the other members of the union, let's say Nick Robinson or Michael Gove, have ended up running the bits of the country that the old Etonians have left for them. The BBC. The Department of State for Education. But women haven't. Even though I have on my side Edwina Curry, the house is, uh, this House's first woman MP, 
and Tessa, well, Tessa's on the other side, who delivered the Olympics, and you are now a dame, Tessa. I'm afraid we haven't penetrated public life. We cannot pretend that we are, this country is full of feminists or run by feminists. How nice it would be if we were. Think of all the brass rubbing and nature rambles. <laughs> Think the whole national conversation could be one long vagina monologue. <laughs> but it is not. I've established that men aren't feminists. They're basically we're going to say old Italians. Let's put that aside. But I'm afraid to say we're almost getting to a point in the debate where not even women are admitting they're feminists now. Think of Mary Berry, as I'm sure you all do most of the time. She says feminism is a dirty word. And if you want a man ever to do anything, you've got to talk to him as if he's a naughty toddler, not doing his number two in the potty. And when he does it, you, he comes back and you have to say to him, fluffing him, wasn't that fun? Well, I'm sorry. Oh, it's Carla Bruni. She said she gave an interview to French Vogue saying, we don't need feminism anymore. Yes, we do. We need it more than ever. I don't want to do boring statistics, but I mean, the level of penetration, Michael, as you know, of women in the professions, it may be 50% in law. I bet it's not, but it can't be more than 20% in medicine, in, you know, where are women in, in the top, top ranks of public life? I'm waiting for an interruption. Nobody's made one yet. <laughs> Um, I recently did University Challenge representing New College and I hope none of you saw it because I think I demonstrated conclusively that if I did learn anything in four years here I had completely erased it from my mainframe and I was like an iPod restored to factory settings completely sort of blank so I didn't know anything at all but what surprised me about doing a University Challenge was that of the wonderful Jeremy Paxman from another place introduced me as winner of the Bad Sex Prize and sister of Boris. I didn't really mind, you know, basically having him as my brother is a net bonus. But to be introduced solely as a sort of appendage to another, to another male made me think if I'm meeting misogyny and prejudice and sort of that sort of thing in daily life, I bet it's really quite hard for people who haven't been to New College Oxford and edited a national magazine, so it's discouraging. In fact, here are my stats, Michael. Women are 66% of the workforce, receive, but receive what percentage of the, of the world's income? 10%. There are two women CEOs in the FTSE 100. Only 9% of direct, exec director appointments have been women. We've been talking about it equal ops for decades. It's lovely in theory, clearly not in practice. Um, very depressing, isn't it? I've got to a bit in my speech where it says, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> so let's keep going. We must all continue to struggle. As men aren't giving up without a fight. Why? If you occupy the citadels of power, would you let the monstrous regiment take them over? Let's remember that this week, Women's Hour, the oestrogen of the airways, airwaves, produced a power list. I hope you're on it, Tessa. You weren't. OK, so they don't even understand what power is. They warble about soft power and awarded two out of the top five slots to women who inherited their positions of power. I know, of course, Queen Elizabeth II and Elizabeth Murdoch. The Woman's Hour fiasco was a painful reminder, actually, of the weak position that we are in, not our strength. If we are all feminists now, and I don't think we are, and I think I have shown that we're not. I think the fact that after 50 years, I am as good as the Oxford Union can get for this chamber and this debate is a reflection not of the pulling power of this chamber, but of the quality of women in public life. So on that basis alone, and everything else I have said, it saddens me to tell you that this proves we are not all feminists now, and we have a long way to go until we are. I beg to oppose. <laughs>